Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number eight on using the SketchUp CAD software to design 3D objects for 3D printers. Okay, we're using SketchUp for the purpose of printing on 3D printers. And what we're going to talk about today is how to think like a designer. And we're going to go through an actual design of a real object where we're going to go through the process that we've been talking about, but we're going to create a real object. What are we going to create? Well, I would like a case for my glasses. Okay, that would be something that we could do in uh, with uh, SketchUp and with a 3D printer. Now I want to remind you some of the concepts that we've learned in the first, second, seven lessons about how to think like a mechanical designer or maybe I should say how mechanical designers should think because they don't always think this way. But the first thing is is that when you're designing something you need to be very deliberate in your CAD software about when you create an object to be very mindful of its position and its dimension. Don't just eyeball it in or sketch it in and think you can come back later and fix it. You want to be putting dimensions in precisely as you draw the objects. Yes, you can fix things later, but it's a lot easier to dimension things correctly right when you get started. Okay. Second thing is you want to design to design rules because you can draw things that you cannot build. And so you need to develop a good work, uh, uh, working set of design rules for whatever your fabrication technology is. And for us, it is a 3D printer. And then the third thing that you want to do is I always like to sketch things first on paper. Because if I sketch things on paper, then when I go to the CAD software, I'm not tempted to start just winging it. I've kind of thought through all my dimensions before I even open up my design software. Okay, so with that said, let's just jump in and get started. So I would like to build a case like this for my glasses. And we're gonna kinda go through it step by step, thinking like a designer. Okay, what do we wanna start with? We wanna start with our calipers. And what would we like to do? We would like to sort of sketch out what this uh, case would look like, okay? So let me switch over to the overhead camera. And let me get out of your way here. Let's see if this is going to work. I think this will work nicely. And so let's look and kind of get some dimensions on my glasses. And so let's say that I'm going to have some width and I'm going to have some height. Okay. And I'm just going to sketch that there. And my glasses need to fit down in that like that. So let's see if we can put some dimensions on what that should be. Let me hit focus to make sure you're getting a really clear focus here. Okay, so let's look here. And I'm going to kind of measure my glasses this way. And just sort of see what it would take to fit. Okay, it looks like if my inside dimension Oh, let's say that if that were about, uh, I would say if that were about 38, I could probably fit those in there nice and snugly. And so what I want this dimension to be is 38 millimeters. Okay, now how about the height? Well, I'm going to look at it this way. Okay. And if I make it, let's say right there is about 28, and it looks like that they would fit without really being crammed in there. And so I think that I would like this dimension here to be 28. All right, so now I got kind of a cross section. That's the first thing I need. But let me work a little bit more on my sketch. We've got to think that we've got to have a thickness to the wall and I'm exaggerating it here okay now remember we want to think about design rules how thick should the wall of the case be well if we go back and look at these uh, this design rule tester that uh, I did what we can see is is that you can very easily make something that is a millimeter okay you can very easily make something that's a millimeter and it's nice and and uh, sturdy and certainly two millimeters is very very easy and so if I just look at this test device that I did 
I am thinking that what I would like is I would like the edges to be two millimeters thick. So I want this dimension to be two millimeters. Okay. And one of the reasons I want it two millimeters, it'll it'll make the, the, the case not clunky. It will make the case, I think I need to move this camera this way a little bit. Let's see, did that help? Okay. It'll make this, uh, it'll make the case where it's not clunky, but at the same time, uh, it will be sturdy enough to, to, to be good. And so just having this little device helps me decide too. Also, we're going to need a slip fit. And where it's a slip fit, I ha need half the thickness on one side and half the thickness on the other side. So if I'm going to have half the thickness on one side and half the thickness on the other side, there's going to be a segment of this that's going to be one millimeter thick on each side. And when I look at my little structures, I think that I can make something with structural integrity that's a millimeter. So again, it's just helpful to have these little design rule checkers that we uh, designed and built in an earlier lesson. Okay, so if this is 38 and this is 2 and this is 2, my outside dimension is going to be what? 42. Okay, from here to here is going to be 42. And uh, similarly, this 28, I'm going to add 2 and 2. And that is going to be 32. Okay, so you see just taking a few minutes now, I kind of have the cross section of the rectangle that I would build to, to make this thing. But I'm also going to have to kind of think about the other dimension. And in the other dimension, you know, my glasses need to fit like this. Okay, they need to fit like that. So let's see here. If I had this, want to get you where you can see here okay if I had it looks like about one I'm just kind of measuring here right I don't want them jammed in there but I don't want them in there real loose and so I'm gonna say about about 136 would be good okay about 136 so if this is 136 from here to here, then what do I also have to remember? I'm going to add 2 here, and I'm going to add 2 here, okay? And so the distance between here and here on the outside is going to be 140, okay? So now I have an outside dimension of 140, an outside dimension of 42, and an outside dimension of 32. You notice this lesson is supposed to be about SketchUp, but you notice we're talking a lot more about just the preliminary work. And it really doesn't matter whether you are going to be using, it doesn't really matter whether you are going to be using uh, SketchUp or any other CAD program. You need to be doing this type of work. Okay, now comes the one kind of tricky part that we really want to be very mindful about, and this is the part that you typically see skip because you'd just rather not do it. We have to think about how the top and the bottom fit together. Okay. And so I'm just going to come across here. Let's say uh, this isn't going to be to scale, but what do I know? I know that I have two on each side. Okay. So I'm going to draw it like this. Okay. And then I'm going to come up to here. Okay, if I were really doing this, I would use a ruler, but I don't want to go that slow because this is already kind of slow. Now, what is the bottom going to do? It's going to come in and it's going to come in like, uh, like that. Okay, and then it is going to come up some distance like this and then come back down. And then it's going to come up some distance and over and come back down. Okay, you see this is the bottom case and the glasses are going to fit in like this. And then the top is going to slip fit on there. All right, so now we need a second piece. And the second piece is going to come up like this. Okay, and then it's going to come over. And it's going to come over down like this. All right. But now look, it's going to come in and then up, all right, and then over and then up, and then it's going to come in and it's going to come over and it's going to come up. Okay, now let's think about it. What's this dimension? 
That dimension is two millimeters. What's this dimension? That dimension is two millimeters. What's this dimension? That dimension is two millimeters. Now look here very carefully. This is one and this is one. Okay. This is one and this is one. Okay. So you have one and one is two, but that's going to allow a slip fit. Now let's put some dimensions on here that we know. From here to here, all the way the whole distance, that is going to be 140. Okay. If we go from here to here, that is going to be 136. So this is going to be 136. Okay, if that is 136, then how are we going to uh, divide that up? Let's see. 136. Let's say if we made it 140, like if we had this as 100 and this as 40, that would be kind of a nice breakdown. But remember, we have to subtract 2 from each side. So I would say then from here to here is going to be 38, okay? And from here to here is going to be 98, okay? So then I've got 2 here and I've got 2 here. So I've got 2 and 98 takes you to 100 to get here, and then 2 and 38 takes you to get 40 to get here, and then you're 140. Okay, so now the only thing that we really have to think of is how high is this point here? You know, how long is this? Uh, if this is 38 from here to here, let's just make this at 20. So let's say this is going to be 20, okay, like that. And then this is going to be what would I have left? 18, all right. And then this would be, what would that be? Uh, that distance would still be 98. Okay, so let's see if this works. 98, uh, I think I might be off by 2 here. Okay, if this is 20 and 20 is 40. No, this is going to work. 20 and 18 and 2. Okay, that's 40. And then 98 and 2 is uh, 98 and 2 is 100. All right, guys, draw this out carefully, and then do you see all our numbers add up? And it's probably taken us five or ten minutes to do this, but now when we come over to SketchUp, it's going to be so much easier because we've already got our dimensions pretty much uh, pretty much uh, straightened out. Okay, so let's think like a designer. Let's go back over here to SketchUp. Let's start with a new design. Don't save changes. I'm going to live dangerously. Let's kill this guy. Okay, remember, let's go in and look at our uh, at our model info, make sure what we're working in. Okay, we're in decimal. We're in millimeters. Okay, and then uh, I'd want to, to design to a hundredth, so I would put 0, 0.00 millimeters. I do not want to length snap because that just slows me down. Okay, and then I am going to kill that. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because remember, we're probably pretty far away. Okay, so let's start by making our first rectangle. All right, and let's come back over here and review what we're going to do. We want to make this rectangle, and it's going to be 42 by 32. All right, so let's start with that 42 by 32, and I'm going to try hard to keep you on the right camera view. Okay, so let's come here, snap to the origin, come out, uh, and then click again. All right, now that's the wrong dimension, but I'm going to put the right dimension in. That is going to be 42 comma 32, enter. All right, now I've got a nice rectangle. I'm going to hold, I'm going to orbit my view, so I will hold. I will click my mouse uh, wheel. I will click my mouse wheel, and then I will orient this where it's a little easier for me to see it. 
All right. Now, one of the things that I didn't really talk about over here, and that is on my case, I don't want something with sharp edges. I don't want something like this cube. I would like gently rounded edges. And so what I would like to do is fill at the edges. I would like to do this. Okay. And our dimensions are right, so so I didn't show this in the drawing because you know it's not a dimensional thing, but that is what I am going to do over here now in design. And so let's come over here. Let me uh, get this, make sure you can see it well. All right, now what I would like is a radius of about four millimeters on that round corner. And so imagine it'd be like a circle with a radius of four millimeters. And so I'm, I need to put a circle on here, but I need to get it in the right position. And to get our positions down, who is our friend? Our friend is the ruler, I mean the tape measure. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna go out four, enter. Okay, now I go from that point, click, come down, click, four, enter. Now look at that. I've got a little point that is four from here and four from here. Let's do the same thing down here. Click once, pull out, make sure you're on the axis, click again, type in four, enter. Then start at that point, uh, snap to the point where it pops to it. You see guide point, click once, come up an arbitrary amount make sure you're along the axis you see it's green click again for enter okay come here click for enter come here click up click for enter and come here uh, the corner over click for enter and then here click come down for enter okay now I should be able to draw circles on those uh, points so I come up to my draw tool circle is hiding behind the rectangle I believe there it is circle okay I come here I snap to that guide point and then I come out and I can just snap to there okay then I click here I snap I come here and snap I click here, I snap. Do you see how it's, I'm snapping to the center point and then I come out and I snap to that line. Oh my goodness, look at that. I'm going to get some round corners. All right, now this is something, a new skill that we have not done before. But what I want to show you is, is that it breaks those lines up at the intersection. So I want you to get the erase tool. It looks like an eraser up here. Okay, and then what I want you to do is come down. I want to put the little circle on the eraser right on that line and click that line is gone. Click that line is gone. Got rid of that. Got rid of that. Get rid of that. Ah, look at that. It did both of them. That was nice. Let's see if I can do that again. Okay, let me make sure I got rid of those. I did not get rid of that. Okay, now that looks good. Now I need to get rid of the part of the circle that I'm not using. So I'm going to get rid of that right there, that right there, there, and there. Boom! Did you see what we just did? We did a fillet. We got a nice rounded rectangle. Uh-huh. We're going to have a nice glasses case. All right, so now what do we want to do? Well, what I want to do is realize that if we go back to this picture over here, okay, I'm going to kind of need to have two different thicknesses. I'm going to need to be able to come in two millimeters for this part, and I need to come in one millimeter for this part. And so really, if you think of this when you're looking down on this, like if I turned it like this and you were looking down on it, you have three different widths. You have the width from here to here, you have the width from here to here, and then you have the width from here to here. So really, I need to draw those things in now while I'm still down here and things are easy. I'm trying to think 
whether I should extrude. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this the two millimeters. Remember how we want the bottom two millimeters. So I'm going to draw those on the top of it, but I'm going to go ahead and and bring this up two millimeters to give it some thickness. And so we are going to come back to this design. So I want to go ahead and make this a flat plate. You got to think now it's just a, a, a it's a uh, two dimensional object. I'm going to make it a three dimensional object. Get my extrude tool here, my push puller click on it, come down here, click on this face, come up an arbitrary amount. Whoa, that's way too thick. That's all right. Click again and I'll type in to enter. All right. Now I'm going to hold the center mouse wheel down and I'm going to move the mouse and look at that. I have a nice two millimeter plate. All right. Now I need to draw on this face because I need to be able to pull things up from here. And so this is a new technique we're going to learn. I could draw the whole rectangle again, you know, kind of like one millimeter in and draw the whole rectangle again two millimeters in, but there is a handy tool called the offset tool. And if you come over here, you see it says offset. Do you see that tool? It's called offset. All right. Now I'm going to come here, I'm just going to click somewhere on this, make sure that it sees it, okay, and then I'm going to pull it in, ah, come on, let's see, maybe I need to select it and then get the offset tool, okay, so I've selected it, I've got the offset tool, I'm on the edge and I come in an arbitrary amount and then I type in 2, enter. Wow, look at that. It scared me when I pulled it in and it made it square. I thought, oh, am I going to have to round that again? But no, it's smart. So that is going to be the whole case. But now I need to leave a rectangle for the little lip, right? I need to leave a rectangle for this little lip here, okay? So we'll come back over here and we'll get the uh, remembering that we have to select first. So I'm going to select that outside part and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to get the offset tool and I'm going to come in and now I'm going to click I'm going to say one enter okay look at that so I've got two things that I can pull up now all right very important at this point we've got to realize that we're going to have a top let me come back over here we're going to have a bottom part and we are going to have a top part now this top part I'm going to build upside down so this needs to be over here and this needs to be here. So now I'm going to start designing these two things separately. But seeing that rather than starting and doing the top part because this part is the same as this part, I need to, to copy and paste what I, what I have now so that I don't have to redo this. I can use this as the starting point for both the top and the bottom. So we will come back over here. So I will use this as both the top and the bottom. So now I need to get my selection tool. I need to select everything. And now I need to get the move tool. Okay, here's the move tool. I come down here. I click, I'll click on this edge and I'll click one time. I'll move it, but remember I want to copy. So what do I do? I click control. Okay. And now I move it to where I want and then I click again. All right. Let me do that again to make sure you understand how to do that. Okay. So what do I do? Selection tool, select everything. Okay. So I drag and drop, let the mouse off. Now I get the move tool. I click once. Okay. When I move, I don't hold the mouse button down. I just click once. So I click once, right? And now I move. But how do I keep the original? I tap control. Now it's waiting for the second click. So I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to click it a second time. Now I have two copies of this. Boom! Did you see that? I've got two copies of it. I don't have to redesign the whole thing. Uh-uh. I'm going to work from this one. Okay. Now this is the base plate of the, uh, let's call it the bottom part. And so both of these, both of these outer rings I need to pull up initially the same amount. And what is that same amount going to be? Okay. I need to pull it from here to here. Both of them are going to pull up. This one is going to pull up 98 this one's going to come pull up 98. This will pull up more, but for right now I'm going to pull them both up the 98. 
Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because this could be a little tricky. So I'm going to get this inside one. I'm going to pull it up an arbitrary amount. Oops, I'm sorry. I try not to do that. Okay, so I'm going to select this one. How far did I want to bring it up? 98. So I get the push-pull tool, click one time, go here, click one time, come up an arbitrary amount, right? I'm waiting for the second click, click the second time, and then type in 98. Boom. Now I'm going to back off, bring this down. Now I need to bring his friend up. Let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? So I'm going to get the selection tool, select that outer ring. I didn't quite get it. I need to zoom in some, okay. There we go. And now get the push-pull tool, come down, go down to that face, click once, come up, click again, type in 98, enter. All right, now let's uh, move over, get the hand hold the center mouse wheel down and kind of look down in it. Okay, that's looking good. But what do I know? What do I know? That inside needs to come up another 20. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Get the selection tool, click the inside, push pull, come up, arbitrary amount, click, type in what? 20. All right. So now, look at this, huh? Look at this. Oh man, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Edit, undo, push, pull. I am so sorry about that. Let me come back. Okay. I really, really, really try hard not to do that. Okay, so what do we want? We want this inside one now. What does it need to come up? Another 20, get the push, pull tool, come in right to it pull it up an arbitrary amount, click, now type in 20, enter. Boom, you see it now. Look at that. Let's get the hand, bring it up a little bit, let's scroll around. Look at that. What do I have now? I have this bottom part of the glass holder. Now what do I need to do? I need to do the top part. On the top part, it's going to extrude. You want the whole length to be 38. Okay, but you're already too thick here. So how much do I need to extrude? I need to extrude the, uh, oh no, this is 40. This is going to be 40. I already have two, so I would actually extrude 38. Okay, so changing the view, being a good boy here, changing the view. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay, so we're going to extrude both of those, the 38, and then we'll come back and, uh, no, uh, nope, got to think, got to think what we're doing here. Come back here. Both of them are going to extrude 18. Okay, both of them are going to extrude 18, and then the other one will extrude another 20 on top of the 18, but let's start by giving them both 18. Okay, so we come here, selection tool, select this, push pull. Notice how I'm doing the inside one first so I don't hide it. It would be hard to see it if I did the outside one first. So grab it, come up, an arbitrary amount, click, type in 18, enter, boom. Now we need to get his friend here. I think maybe I can click on it, come up, and I'll just reference it to that. Boom, it snapped to that. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to extrude the outside one. Let's go back and look at this, okay, because on here it's the outside one that comes down more. He needs to come down another 20, okay? He needs to come down another 20. And so we're going to come back over here, and it's the outside one that's going to come down another 20. So grab it, come up, click, type in 20. Boom. Look at that, huh? Look at that, and I even had the right camera view so you could see me do it. This is the inside lip that's going to fit over that, okay, and that is going to make my glass case. All right, so now let's think a little bit about 
uh, dimensions, okay, about our gaps, right? Because we need to be thinking as a, uh, you know, we need to be thinking relative to design rules, all right? The one thing that I said by looking at this is I said that the two millimeters would be a nice thickness for the whole case, and the one millimeter is not so thin that it would be flimsy. And so two millimeters for the outside thickness here and one millimeter for this decided it would work. Okay, but if this is going to be a slip fit, do we need to put a little bit of a gap? Do we need to adjust this to leave a little bit of a gap? And I should have talked about this before. Remember, and I think it was, uh, it might have been our last lesson, we talked about this gauge thing to determine how things fit together. And we started by leaving like, uh, let's see, leaving uh, a tenth of a millimeter uh, margin, okay? Or uh, no, this was a, uh, this was, a millimeter margin and we came all the way down to a completely uh, same size where the pin and the hole are the same size and this one had like a, a 0.1 millimeter uh, uh, extra space and with 0.1 millimeter extra space you get a very nice sliding okay so if I put an extra gap of 0.1 millimeters let's see between uh, between here and here, what would happen? It would slip off. But if I make it on my gauge, remember the one that was the same size? If I do that, it's in there tight and I can pull it out. So by playing with this gauge, what I can see, and again, I should have talked about this to begin with, I don't want to leave a gap. I want this to be from, I want from here to here to be exactly what it is from here to here. Uh, let me move this where you can see it. From here to here is going to be exactly the same as from here to here. And then I should get a slip fit that is tight enough that it stays on, but flexible enough that I can uh, you know, pull it off if I want to. Okay, so what do we need to do now with this design? We've talked about the design rules. We've uh, done everything. I need to come up here and I need to uh, come up to file and I need to export STL. Now to export STL, you need to get that from the extension warehouse. You need to make sure that you went to the extension warehouse and then type in like uh, export STL and then uh, it'll come up here with uh, with the plugins that will allow you to get rid of an STL. Uh, this is STL uh, import. I think I use the SketchUp STL. Uh, there's a number number of them that'll work, but you need to make sure that you install that so that you can export it. And so then you come over here and you export STL. After you export STL, then you bring it into your slicer software. And then after you bring it into your slicer software, what you are going to do is uh, you are going to then send it to the 3D printer. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and look at it because this will probably take some number of hours. So hold on just a second. We will be right back with you. Okay guys, I am back and we have successfully printed this glasses case. We have the bottom and we have the top. And let's see maybe if you can see it a little more if I go to the uh, overhead viewer here and let me see if I can kind of get out of your way. Look at that. You see how we have that lip on there? And of course this picture wasn't to scale, but then we've got the top part. Do you see the little lip on the top part? And so we've got the kind of top part and we've got the bottom part. So now the first question is, did we dimension things correctly? Well, it looks like they were dimensioned correctly. But now what is the trickiest part about this? Whether we got the tolerance right, whether we got the tolerance right, whether we should have left a little gap in there. Uh, let's come back here. Whether we should have left a little gap in there to make sure that they would come together, or if we left too much gap, they would, uh, you know, this would fall off, or if we left not enough, you would jam it on there and never be able to get the lid off. But what did we do? We went to this this sort of gauge that we made in an earlier lesson to determine the tolerance. I think it was the lesson called tolerance, and we determined that if we made a fit where the hole and the peg are the same size, it would go together 
but it wouldn't come apart by itself, but you could pull it apart. So that felt just about right. So the real question is, is this going to work or not? Okay, is this going to work or not? All right, so moment of truth. We come in and it fit on, okay, it fit on, and then it presses together nicely. It comes off, it presses together nicely, and I cannot sling that thing off. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now the question is the moment of truth, will the glasses fit in there? Will the glasses fit in there? Okay, look at that, look at that. Boom, a very nice case to protect my most expensive lineless bifocal lenses. You know those glasses are like $400 now to get a normal pair of glasses. So we want to take care of them. And so I have a nice case. If I'm going somewhere, you know, maybe how many times do you have your glasses fall off the side of your bed? Well, what I can do is I can put them in here to protect them. I think uh, the other nice thing is they sit a little bit at an angle. So if you look the glasses, the glasses themselves are not actually touching. They're not actually touching the uh, plastic. The lens is not touching anything because they like to sit in there at a diagonal. And then we go, lid is on. All right, guys. I hope this has been a fun lesson for you. And I just want to remind you about thinking like a designer. What do you do? Every single thing that we did, what did we do when we made it? We thought about position and we thought about dimension. What is the other thing that we did? We designed two design rules. The design rules were determined by this object, which was done in our design uh, rule lesson, and this lesson, which was done in our lesson on tolerances. And by, by understanding the design rules and understanding the tolerances, we made something that worked right the first time. Okay, the other thing that we learned is, is that it's very useful, at least for me, maybe there's people that are smarter than me, it's very useful to sketch things up on paper and get all of your dimensions all worked out, right, where we have like the 2 plus the 36 plus the 38 plus the 2 plus the 98, all the things add up to the outside dimensions so that we take into account all the little dimensions on our drawing. Okay, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I would love to hear your com I would love to hear your comments down below. Okay, if you like this, think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel or sharing this with others. Really, really enjoy your feedback. So I would uh, hope that you would leave me some comments below. Again, Paul McWhorter, TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.